hello everybody, I'm Fabio Sdogati, I am a professor of international economics at the Politecnico di Milano and its School of Management. Uh, today I would like to talk to you, although briefly, about uh, something that is making the first page of newspapers every single day. How worrisome is the size of public debt? Uh, last time I was talking to you, I was talking about Greece and the Greek public debt. Well, the, the issue today is not very different from that. Uh, Greek is the Greece is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, most probably, we have a general issue with public debt. So, let's start out by defining what public debt is. Public debt is simply uh, that amount of paper, of bonds, of promises, of obligations that governments take in order to raise cash with which they finance public spending. Um, in the profession, those are simply called paper or bonds because they are promises and they are on paper. Now, of course, public spending is, is a tremendously important thing for the economy. Uh, the government spends this money that it collects from banks and uh, consumers uh, in order to stimulate the economy. In other words, public spending is important because it fills a gap between what is being produced, the value of what is being produced in the economy, and what is being spent. Now, uh, traditionally, we were thinking that public debt should not be excessive. What, what excessive really means is a public problem, is a general problem, is everybody's problem. Uh, but, for instance, in 1992, uh, in Maastricht, a treaty was signed uh, among members of the then still European Economic Community, uh, nowadays the European Union, a treaty which would uh, seek to call together a number of countries in order to have a subset of the European Union members adopting a single currency, which would be the euro adopted on January 1st, 1999. Well, in order for this uh, uh, group of countries to get together and adopt the euro, some conditions had to be met. And these conditions were uh, several. Um, probably the better known one is the ratio of uh, government deficit to GDP. It was said that if a country wanted to belong to the European Monetary Union, the ratio of deficit, government deficit to GDP ought not to exceed 3%. Uh, a different story is public debt. Debt is the sum of all the deficits incurred by a government in uh, uh, the history of the country. And the basic measure say the, how shall I put it, the, 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 what was regarded as normal, so to speak, uh, in terms of ratio of debt to GDP was about 60%. In other words, if a government uh, was showing a debt of 60% of GDP, that was regarded as acceptable. Well, the credit crunch crisis, which we have been going through, and the recession we are still going through, at this very moment, have pushed up uh, public debt to ratios well above 60%. Uh, for instance, we are estimating that the United States will have a public debt in 2010 of more than 80%. These are numbers, these ratios are, are numbers that were uh, regarded as unbelievable for a well-behaved government of a well-behaved country only a few years back. Uh, Italy's 115% was regarded as, as somewhat of a scandal. Now, what's happening? What's happening is that we expect all major 
high per capita income countries to have very large debts for many, many years to come. This is unprecedented. It never happened before. And it raises a question. How trustworthy is a government? Can we trust the promises that the government subscribes when it sells bonds or treasury bills to banks and to consumers who buy these bonds through their savings? Uh, Greece is an example of what may happen. Greece has been heavily attacked by speculation because the size of its deficit and its debt has been increasing very rapidly. But the problem, of course, is not Greece. Greece is a very small country, 10.5 million people. It is part of the euro area. Uh, the effects of this speculative attack against Greece are already fading away. We, are, we have no serious problem about that, I believe. The serious problems we have about larger countries, the UK. The UK has a very large and increasing public debt. Uh, the pound is depreciating. That's a, that's a typical reaction. Uh, uh, sorry, that's the typical effect of uh, a growing deficit and a growing debt. Interest rates, returns on that debt have to increase. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, if they don't, what happens is that uh, the currency depreciates because international investors abandon bonds denominated in pounds, sell pounds on the foreign exchange market in order to get a hold of euro or dollar, and uh, in at that very moment the pound depreciates. So Greece is not a problem. Greece does not have its own currency anymore, and therefore it cannot depreciate it. What about the UK? What about the United States? United States have found themselves in a position in which they had to spend tremendous amount of money in order to contrast the credit crunch and the recession that was generated by it. Uh, to be sure, I think the Obama government did very well, did the correct thing when it uh, spent $787 billion without raising taxes uh, in order to stimulate the economy. I can't begin to imagine how bad this recession would have been in the absence of such stimulus. The same has done the Chinese government, of course, uh, as we all know, $586 billion themselves, and to a lesser extent, Germany and France and Japan and the UK and the other countries. So the real problem, from an historical point of view, is that we had this credit crunch and we tried to attack it through monetary policies, injecting liquidity into the economy hoping that that would uh, enhance expenditures on investment goods. That has not happened. Therefore, governments had to inject expenditures directly into the economy. They had to contribute to demand at the world level. Demand only comes through debt. So how bad is the situation? We don't really know. This is entirely unknown because we never had a situation that would uh, involve at the same time all major countries, all major high per capita income countries. There are some studies saying that this debt will take between 20 and 30 years to get rid of. That's a tremendously long amount of time. Uh, what we know is that new ways of thinking about the debt are necessary. Uh, we used to think, for instance, that large public debts would bring about inflation. There is no inflation. At this moment, there is no inflation. There are large deficits, large debts, no inflation at all. Actually, we are seeing deflation. So, <coughs> how worrisome is the si size of public debt? Very, very worrisome in high per capita income countries less so in developing countries 
So we can expect that if government stimuli are going to come in the future, they will probably come more from developing countries and emerging economies than from hypercapita income countries. Thank you.